Welcome at 30-1 and welcome back to your Transformations Lesson 6. Now in this one here, we're just going to look at stretches in more detail and do more practice problems with stretches. So question number one says, write the equation of the image. So here's my equation and here's what's happening. So y, so we have a horizontal stretch, so that means it's the x is being replaced with and it's a stretch of 3 over 4, so we must do the reciprocal, 4 over 3x. So we end up getting y is equal to 4 over 3x squared, which is the same thing as y is equal to 16 over 3x squared. All right? Let's take a look at the next one. We have y is equal to the cube root, or the square root of x minus 3 after a horizontal stretch by a factor of 4. Okay, so horizontal, my x is going to 1 over 4 about the y-axis, and a vertical stretch by a factor of 2. So my y is going to 1 over 2y. So let's replace both of these at once. So we have 1 over 2y is equal to square root of 1 over 4x, and then we have subtract 3. Alright, now I'm going to start simplifying. First thing I'm going to do, multiply each side by 2. Okay, to get rid of that one half, so I multiply everything by two, multiply by two, so I end up getting y is equal to two, square root, one over four x, and we multiply this by two and that by two, so I get minus six. Okay, both things have to multiply by two, distributive law. Now, what can I do is, I could simplify this here. I could square root the one over four and square root the x. So that's going to give me two square root x over two minus six, these cancel off, I am left with y is equal to square root x subtract 6. And that's it. Okay, let's take a look at the next one. We have 3x, y is equal to 3x plus 7 after a vertical stretch about the x-axis by a factor of 1 over 3 and a reflection in the x-axis. So we also have a reflection. So first I'm going to do my stretch of 1 over 3. So then y, because we're looking at vertical, goes to 3 y. Okay? And then y goes to negative y. So we have 3y is equal to, what is this here? We have 3x plus 7. There's my equation. And then we have y gets negative, so 3 bracket negative y is equal to 3x plus 7. Now I'm just going to multiply everything here by, or divide everything by negative 3. So I end up getting y is equal to, well, 3 divided by 3, negative 3, negative 3, negative 3. We end up getting negative x plus, oh, subtract, right, because it's a negative, subtract 7 over 3. And that's it. Okay, there we go. Okay, let's look at example number 2. Here it says describe the function of the graph of what's happening. So as we go from this to this, what is happening in my graph? So x is being replaced with 1 over 2x, right? That means we're going to have a horizontal, I'll just put hor for stretch, uh, by, by a factor, by factor, of 2 about the x-axis, or sorry, y-axis, right? Now the next one right here, x is being replaced with 3x. So we have x is being replaced with 3x. Now looking at that, we are going to have a, this means we have a horizontal, because x is referring to horizontal, horizontal stretch, by a factor of 1 over 3 about the y-axis. Okay? Now the next one is we have the absolute value of x goes to negative 2. Hmm. So first of all, we have y is going to 1 
over 2. Why? Right? Because I divide this by 2, divide that by 2, so it's 1 over 2. We also have y is going to negative y. That's my second one. Okay? So what do we have here? First of all is we have y refers to vertical. I'm going to take the reflection, so vertical, or take the reciprocal. A vertical stretch by a factor of 2 about the y. Or sorry, about the x-axis. And then we also have a vertical reflection or a reflection put reflection about or in the x axis. Okay? So that's a vertical reflection, right? Next one here is we take a look at this. We have y is being replaced with 3y. Okay? So if y is being replaced with 3y, we take the reciprocal. This is a vertical, a vertical reflection, or sorry, vertical stretch by a factor of 1 over 3, okay? About the x-axis, okay? Let's take a look at this next one here. Now we have two changes. Y is being traced with 1 over 2. Okay? And we have X being replaced with 1 over 3X. Okay, I got 1 over 2 because I have to put this 2 onto the Y side. Alright? So what does that mean? Is we have a vertical stretch by a factor of 2. about the x-axis and we have a horizontal stretch by a factor a factor of 3 about the y. Okay? Last one. Now here, x is being replaced with 2x. And x is also being replaced with negative x. So what does that mean? Well, this is a horizontal by a factor of 2, horizontal stretch factor of 1 over 2 about, oh, about the y and this here means a reflection about the y. Okay, so that's right there is a horizontal reflection above the Y. All right, let's take a look at the next one. The next one's here, we have two graphs. We have F of X, and then something happened, either a stretch or a reflection. So if I look at this one here, my original is my thin line. This is only half as tall. So then Y got replaced with 2Y. So we have 2Y is equal to 6 all over X squared plus 1. Okay, so I divide both sides by 2, divide this side by 2, I end up getting y is equal to 3 all over x squared plus 1. There we go. Now let's take a look at this one here. I have this going to this one, right? So my first thing I look at is, hmm, well, this here is 0, 0,5, or sorry, 0, 0,3, and here it is 0, negative 6. So my y got replaced with, it's doubled in distance from the origin, so that's 1 over 2y, and it got flipped, y got replaced with negative y. 
Okay? What else happened with my x's? Well, this here, let's take a look at this point. This point is uh, 0, or sorry, negative 1, 2, one, two 3, negative 3, comma, 1. And this point here is, well, 3, comma, negative 2. So my x's have switched from negative to positive. So x went to negative x. And that is it. These are my three things that happen. Okay? So we have a reflection in the y-axis, we have a reflection in the x-axis, and we have a vertical stretch. So my new equation is going to be y, it gets 1 over 2y is equal to f of x. Okay? Now I'm going to do my reflections. Oh, but first I'm going to multiply everything by 2, by 2, by 2. So I end up getting 2, oops, y is equal to 2 f of x. And then switch everything off. So I have negative y is equal to 2 f negative x. And then we have y is equal to negative 2 f of x. Okay? Oh, f of negative x. I'll make that a bit more clear. Okay? Because all I did was I divided everything by negative 1 to put that negative on that side. So we want y positive and all by itself. So there's my answer. Here we go. Let's take a look at this next one here. So my original is this thin one. Okay? And there's my equation. Now, I look at this. Do my heights, my maximum heights in my vertex change? No, they don't. They do not change at all. Also, this vertex is on this side of this line and still on this side. It's in the same quadrant. This vertex is in the same quadrant. This vertex is in the same quadrant. So there's no reflections. That's one thing I know. This vertex and this vertex, same quadrant. This vertex and this vertex, same quadrant. No reflections. Okay? We're starting in the same quadrants and ending in the same quadrants. Therefore, once again, no reflections. Now let's take a look at if there's a vertical any vertical stretches. I look at this vertex here. This is, uh, let's see, we have, well, it's somewhere around there, maybe 3.5, or sorry, 8.5, and this is a total of, I don't know, 45. Well, my vertical, if I look at this here, we are at the same height. So there is no vertical stretch. My, my vertexes are the same height, so there's no vertical stretch. Now let's take a look if there is a horizontal stretch. Well, I look at this and there is. This is 6, and this goes to what? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So this is 12. Ah, so that's double. So x is replaced with... Okay, let's try this one. This is 4, that's 8. So x is replaced with 1 over 2x. That's my only shift. So then I have to put 1 over 2x for everything. So we have y is equal to bracket 1 over 2x plus 4 bracket. Then we have 1 over 2x minus 2 bracket. And then we're going to have 1 over 2x minus 6 bracket. Now I look at this. If I want, I can multiply each of those by 2, or I can factor out a 1 over 2 from each of these. So that's the same thing as 1 over 2, x plus 8, 1 over 2, x minus 4, 1 over 2, x minus 12. Okay? So multiply all these together, that's going to give me 1 over 8, or 1 over 2 to the 3, x minus 8. This is y equals x subtract 4, and then we have x subtract 12. Okay? And that's everything. So we are now done all the way up to question 3. So question 4, very last question. All right? We have, it says, a polynomial function has this equation. Okay? Determine the zeros if and the y-intercept of the following transformations are applied. So that's the x and y-intercept. All right, so first of all, my x-intercept here, these are my original x-intercepts, are 
is equal to, we have 4, negative 3, and we have negative 6. Now my y-intercept is, we multiply all of these together. So we have negative 4 multiplied by 3, and then we have to multiply that by 6. So it's going to be negative 12, negative 72. Okay? So that should help us out here. Now, this one here says we have negative 3 and p. So this is a reflection in the x. So that's vert. Vertical reflection in the x axis. I'll separate that so it's easier to read. In the x axis. Okay? Also, y is going to 1 over 3y, because this is y to negative y. So that means we have a vertical stretch of 3 about the x-axis. So what happens here? Well, I have to multiply my y-intercept by 72 and negative. So it's going to be, the y-intercept now is going to be positive uh, 216, I believe. Well, okay, so we multiply that by 3, 6, 7, 216, yep. And my x-axis, my x-intercepts do not change, so we get x is equal to 4, comma, negative 3, comma, negative 6. So those ones do not change. So this is my y-intercept and my x-intercept. Okay, let's take a look at b. So here, x is replaced with 1 over 2x, which means we have a stretch stretch by a factor of 2. Okay, so that's what we have. Horizontal stretch by a factor of 2 about the y-axis. And we also know that x goes to negative x. So we have reflection in the y. So everything that was positive turns negative. Okay, so we are doubled. So each of these must be doubled, right? Each of these up here are doubled. So I'm going to end up getting a look here, uh, x is equal to, we multiply doubled and then negative, so 8, so that's going to be negative 8, comma, doubled, and then if it was negative, it's going to be positive, 6, and then 12. And my y doesn't change, because this is only horizontal. So my y is equal to negative 72, and that is it. Okay? Alright, hopefully you understood that. Good luck, as I see you tomorrow, and we'll work on this together.